Scientists went to Iceland and have crushed rocks and they may have solved the fall of the Roman Empire. Uh, what? If you know my channel, you know I'm reporting about all these eruptions that are currently happening in Iceland on a regular basis. But what does that have to do with the Roman Empire? Iceland and the Roman Empire and the fall of the Roman Empire? It sounds crazy, guys, but it really is happening and it's very very interesting because a research team has studies very unusual rocks that they discovered in Iceland and they think that this is somehow connected or that these rocks are somehow a testimony of the late antique little ice age. So the research was led by scientists at the University of Southampton in collaboration with institutions from Canada and China. And it offers new evidence about the intensity and the scope of this, how it's called, late antique little ice age. That was a climatic episode that has occurred in the sixth century and that may have played a key role in the collapse of the Roman Empire. But still, what has Iceland to do with it? When I first saw it, my suspicion was volcanoes because we know what especially large volcanoes can do if they spew ash into the atmosphere. So let's look into this if that is the case. This international team of renowned researchers has focused their work on this unique finding, a group of unusual rocks that were located on an elevated beach terrace on the western coast of Iceland. Interesting, these rocks guys were apparently transported to that location and this gets more interesting by the second, by icebergs. Okay, so they are linked to a brief but very intense glaciation period or process that began around the year 540 AD and has lasted approximately for two or three centuries. And I've always said it, right? All these volcanoes that we're observing, and we're observing some big ones like Campi Fligri, the super volcano near Naples. If they have a large eruption, this can cause something like this. So it's very interesting. Learn from history and prepare for these events. That is my opinion. We should prepare better for this because if Campi Fligri in Italy had a big eruption, the world would only have 74 days of food left. Because if the sun is blocked, everything's filled with ashes, it's getting cold. Where do you grow? So for decades, for such a long time, historians have debated to what extent this climate cooling may have influenced the decline of the Roman Empire. And this new study provides the physical evidence that reinforces the theory that an episode of abrupt short-lived cooling may have worsened an already deteriorating political and economic situation that was taking place in Rome, in the Roman Empire. And that might have triggered mass migrations that transformed the map of Europe at the time. So regarding the collapse of the Roman Empire, this cooling may have been the straw, how you say, that broke the camel's back. So the researchers argue that the glaciation was triggered by a series of three major volcanic eruptions. And the ash emissions that were coming from these eruptions would have blocked the sunlight and would have caused a significant drop in global temperatures. And we all believe this can't happen. It, this can happen quickly. We have Barda Bunga rumbling in Iceland, some other major volcanoes. We have Campi Fligri rumbling and in, in Asia. And we have lots of volcanoes rumbling. 
so many people that I know always think, yeah, yeah, this is happening if Yellowstone erupts. Now we don't need Yellowstone. We need one, two, three, or even more erupting at the same time. And we have a big problem. Shizzy's hitting the fizzy. So these gas emissions at that time would have blocked the sunlight and caused that cooling. So how did they find it? So the whole investigation began with a geological mystery, how they called it. The presence of rocks in Iceland that by their nature do not match the types of formations that are currently present in Iceland, meaning they don't belong to Iceland. What is it? How did they get there? The researchers saying we knew these rocks looked already completely out of place because they don't resemble anything found in Iceland today, but we didn't know the origin of these rocks. So they're saying on the one hand, it's surprising to see anything other than basalt rocks in Iceland. But when you first see these rocks, and there's a picture of the rocks here, if, you, if you'd see these rocks, we wouldn't think anything, right? They look like normal rocks. But for a scientist that is specialized in this, they say, when you first see these rocks, you immediately suspect that they arrived by icebergs from Greenland. Would you have suspected this? I'm not so sure. So, of course, when they found these rocks, they wanted to identify the exact origin of these fragments of rocks. And so the, the scientists analyzed the microscopic, how they called, zircon, zikron or zikron crystals that were contained in the samples. So these crystals are already a tongue breaker if I would pronounce it German, Zikron, that would be easy. In English, Zikron, who knows, but this is how it's written. The crystals that they found in these samples. So they're minerals, right? These minerals that are known for their ability to preserve precise geological information, they were separated after they have carefully crushed the collected rocks. So this Zucron, or I call it Zucron, I pronounce as German, um, acts like a time capsule. So you know what happened. Really, it stores essential data such as the date when it crystallized and also the chemical composition. So the combination of age and compositional characteristics allowed the scientists to pinpoint specific areas um, of the Earth's surface uh, where these rocks might come from. It's like a fingerprint if you uh, want to find out who did something in criminology. Problem is a little bit the temporal diversity of these analyzed fragments has spent nearly three billion years. That is huge. Or like two-thirds of the planet's history. So they say that this is remarkable. So because of this remarkable antiquity, it was possible or it made it possible to link these rocks to different geological regions of Greenland. The terrains and regions in Greenland, they reflect an amalgam of formations that are ranging from 500 million to 3 billion years old. So this is the first evidence that we have ever seen that icebergs were transported from Greenland with rocks. And the scientists saying the fact that the rocks come from nearly all geological regions of Greenland, that's why they have different age differences, um, that supports that they have really glacial origin. Because as glaciers advance, they're moving, they erode the ground and they carry materials from various sources. And then they create a somewhat chaotic mix of rocks and debris that gets trapped into the ice as they're moving forward. 
So this study determined they could pin it down that these glacial deposits were left in Iceland during the 7th century and that did coincide with a climatic phenomenon known as the Bond Event 1. We'll get to that in a second. So where they found the rocks in Iceland, these beach terraces, these terraces were gradually rising due to the slow rebound of the land following the melting of these ice sheets. So the timeline matches a known episode of massive ice transport during which enormous glacial fragments broke off, crossed the ocean, and upon melting, dispersed sediments on distant shores. Like the bond event one. So the value of these findings is extraordinary, especially if you look at the whole global dynamics. So the researchers are saying, quote, what we're seeing is a powerful example of how interconnected the, the global climate system is. When glaciers grow, icebergs break off, ocean currents are altered and landscapes are transformed. Iceberg activity driven by the climate may have been one of the main chain reaction consequences of that sudden cooling that happened. Poor Romans, this is what happened to them. If you find that interesting, guys, like this video, share it with as many friends or wherever you like, and uh, subscribe if you're new here. If you want to support the channel, guys, there's links in the description here. You can buy me a coffee or, or more. I'm supporting my animals, my farm with this. And thanks for watching. Thanks for your supers here. Uh, if you want to become a supporting member of the channel, I would love to have you here. Click the join button or check the link in the description, guys. I hope you're all doing great. I hope I can talk soon to you and see you in another video. I have released some very, very interesting videos. Check them out here in the end screen. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.